That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. So, now what are you going to do about it? Well, it's not what I'm going to do about it. It's what they're going to do. They obviously have to print a retraction. They can't go around accusing innocent people of being retired gunslingers. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. When you shop, remember that there's more than just the price of the product to consider. There's also the reputation of the seller. And if you have a question about reliability, check with your local Better Business Bureau. It's also good practice to check the warranty, what it does and doesn't cover. It's also a good idea to find out if you have to pay for shipping if the merchandise must be returned. And check to see what other charges, if any, you're going to have to pay. Another way to be a careful shopper is to know something about the policies of the store or the seller. Consumers should find out what the return policy is. Does the store give cash refunds? Does it provide credit on future purchases? Does it allow returns only on certain products and not on others? Look, you better get all the facts before you buy. This has been a consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. This is Lorne Green. By the year 1890, Americans were as fond of reading about the West as they were of settling it. Eastern newspapers and pulp magazines made heroes of such generally shady characters as Wild Bill Hickok, Doc Holliday, and Wyatt Earp. Millions were excited by their sensational exploits, most of them made up or embroidered upon by over-eager writers. Now, those particular footsteps belonged to a gentleman in a derby hat and a double-breasted suit who was pacing up and down the railroad station platform of Smoke's End, Kansas. No, he's not a famous gunslinger. He doesn't even look like one. But that gentleman is as responsible for Wyatt Earp's notoriety as Wyatt Earp was. His name is Clarence Dayton, and he writes for the Boston Herald. His pen has made heroes of more men than Samuel Colt's six-gun ever did. He looks a little out of place in this small Kansas town of Smoke's End, but he didn't intend to be here. His train broke down, and he's merely waiting for another one. But before that train gets here, he's going to hear about a legend. A legend that's going to change his life and the lives of every single person in Smokes End, Kansas. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Legend, by John Vornholt. Our stars, Parley Bear and Tommy Cook. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little, too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. Generations ago, families dined by the warmth of the open hearth. 
Today, Sears rekindles this spirit with its open hearth dining room furniture. Faithfully rendered early American designs and careful workmanship give it an heirloom quality. The satin glow and warm highlighting of Sears open hearth take 26 steps to achieve. There's no shorter method to bring out the beauty of the wood. And like all good furniture, open hearth is made to last for a long time with sturdy tongue and groove and mortise and tenon construction. Choose from 16 different pieces of open hearth at most Sears retail stores. There are two people you want to know about in the tiny town of Smokes End, Kansas. One is the town's inveterate cut-up and ne'er-do-well, Billy Weaver. The other is Ned Austin, mild-mannered, soft-spoken owner of the town's hardware store. The fact that these two are fast friends confirms the age-old adage that opposites do attract. Howdy, Ned. How's my favorite shopkeep? Billy, oh, you're looking well this morning, considering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you for getting me out of that scrape last night. It was you, wasn't it? It was me. You were fairly drunk last night. Uh, fairly for a Wednesday. Now, if that had been a Saturday night, I would have just been getting started. Well, you ought not to be getting into fights when you're that drunk. I ought not to be playing poker when I'm that drunk. At least not with them crazy Jones boys. What, they were beating the bejeebers out of me when you stepped in. Well, I don't normally engage in fisticuffs, but I couldn't walk by that alley and watch them beating up a friend of mine. Now, whatever you do, Billy, please don't mention it to anybody. Why, Emily would kill me if she ever found out I was in a fight. Don't worry, Ned. Your secret's safe with me. But I gotta say, you handled yourself fairly well. Well, luckily, they were as drunk as you were. Yeah, but there was two of them, don't forget. At least, I think there was two of them. <laughs> there was two of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Ned, thanks. I'm ready now for what Thursday's got to offer. I'll be seeing you. My. <laughs> I tell you, he's right down there now at the depot. <laughs> Who? That writer feller, Clarence Dayton. Maybe he's doing a story on somebody in Smoke's End. If he's at the depot, don't you think it's more likely he's just waiting for a train? Well, I, I suppose he could be doing that, too. Hey, B Billy, uh, c come here. Hey, what's all the commotion about? We got us a genuine celebrity down at the depot. <laughs> Lot of crab tree? <laughs> oh, yeah, dream on. It, it's some kind of writer fella from uh, Boston. Uh, he's interviewed B Billy the Kid and Wyatt Earp and all of them uh, uh, fellas. Well, who's he interviewing here? We ain't got nobody in Smoke's End who even knows how to load a gun. <laughs> Maybe there's a famous gunslinger in town we don't know nothing about. Oh, go on. All we got in this town is drunks and shopkeepers. <laughs> We're the drunks, and we know it ain't one of us. <laughs> and it sure ain't one of them shopkeepers like that puny little Ned Austin. <laughs> hey, don't you badmouth Ned Austin. You don't know nothing about Ned Austin. Well, I know he ain't no gunslinger. <laughs> Hell, Ned's afraid to sweep a cockroach out of his store. <laughs> that ain't true. I happen to know Ned has a secret past. Ned Austin? <laughs> Billy, if Ned Austin was ever a ferocious gunslinger, I'll buy you a drink every day of your life for as long as you live. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you got yourself a deal. Come on, Henry. Uh, uh, what for? Uh, just come on. <laughs> Well, what, what are you fixing to do here at the, the, the depot, Billy? When's the next train due in? Well, in about half an hour. That's perfect. We know our rider friend ain't going to risk missing that train. Shh. There he is now. Yeah, but, but uh, Billy, what... Shh, what just he... go along with whatever I do. Yeah, uh, re remember the time Ned Austin gunned down those six Union deserters in Abilene? Huh? Boy, the territory was really lawless back then. 
But our Ned Austin was such a good lawman that nobody cared that he used to ride with Jesse James. Oh, oh, yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, and what about the time John Wesley Harden and his gang tried to take over the town? Old Ned shot all their horses out from under him, tied them to a tree, and put them on the next stage out of town. Oh, yeah, that was um, amazing. <laughs> of course, Wyatt Earp offered him a job as chief deputy in Dodge City. But Ned said it's got to be Marshall or nothing else. So, Earp had to get Doc Holliday instead. Uh, pardon me, sir. Yeah? Something I can do for you? D did I hear you mention Wyatt Earp? Did I? Well, I thought I was talking about Ned Austin. Of course, you heard about Ned Austin. Uh, well, no, I haven't. You haven't? Oh, but then you look like an Easterner to me, and uh, Easterners don't know much about gunfighters and such. Sir, I'll have you know I'm an expert on Western gunfighters. I spent many hours interviewing Wyatt Earp, and he never mentioned anything about a Ned Austin. Well, of course not. You think he wants people to know Ned did most of his dirty work for him? He's a very jealous fellow, old Wyatt is. But what else has this Ned Austin done? Well, I don't know if I should tell you, seeing as how you're going to write it down that little pad of yours. But I guess Ned is retired. He can't do much harm. Oh, there's so much to tell. I just don't know where to begin. <laughs> train's almost ready to go. Uh, quickly, is there anything else you can tell me about Ned Austin? Oh, I'm sure I left out quite a bit. Old Ned's had some career. He certainly has. The way he stopped that lynching party single-handedly is extraordinary. I'd love to meet him. Uh, he, he don't like the press. Uh, they sort of ignored him. He won't be ignored anymore, I can promise you that. Uh, gentlemen, you've done Ned a great service by telling me all this. I must have enough here for a dozen articles. <laughs> I really must go. Gentlemen, I thank you profusely. Uh, keep your eyes open. My articles are often reprinted in local newspapers. Uh, goodbye. Henry, I think we have just made old Ned Austin, owner of Smoke's Inn's only hardware store, into a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I love to eat. But it takes so long to cook. That's why we both love our new Kenmore microwave oven from Sears. I can cook a five-pound roast medium rare in just 30 minutes or three strips of bacon in three and a half minutes on a paper plate. Bake two potatoes in eight minutes and cook vegetables faster than boiling them in water. That means less time in the kitchen. And more with you. Fast, clean, cool cooking with Sears Kenmore microwave ovens, all with automatic defrost. Choose the right model for your kitchen from the many styles available at most Sears retail stores. Honey, I can't sleep. Maybe you should try counting sheets. You mean sheep? No, Medley Sheets from Sears in so many great colors from light to dark. Rest easy knowing your bed looks fantastic because Medley Solids come in up to 24 colors like Indian Copper, Royal Blue, Lemon Yellow, and Jungle Green. But don't just count them. Mix and match them with Medley Pattern Sheets and Cases for a designer effect. Then dream in color tonight. Available at most larger Sears retail stores in the catalog. Honey, we've been on the road all day, and you still look cool and crisp. Wearing these Sears shorts and t-shirt help. They're so cool and packable on trips. I brought along several of each. The t-shirts come in solid shades, color keyed to the solid or patterned walking shorts, so I can affordably mix and match a vacation's worth of easy care sportswear. A summer's worth of looks. Mm hmm smart lady. Summer t-shirts and shorts from Sears. Cool, neat, and practical. Available in Mrs. Sizes. At most larger Sears retail stores. Life is a little slow moving in Smoke's End, but it still goes on. And three weeks and countless drinks later, we rejoin the boys in the local saloon. <laughs> I tell you, when Billy finally saw that peddler's worthless horse, he turned white as sweet milk. <laughs> I did not. It was worth every cent I lost in that poker game just to see you finally get taken for something, Billy. <laughs> oh, <I'll> man. <laughs> Billy! Oh, oh, Bill, Billy, you, you got to see this. 
It, it's the Wichita Express. Now, take a look at that front, front page story. Oh, my goodness. Let me see that. Huh? Six guns blazing. Ned Austin tames the West. <laughs> First in a series? Well, so that writer fella was in town to interview Ned Austin. Uh, I'll take my first four drinks now, Ed, so as to buy a round for everybody. How do I know this ain't some fake newspaper? Oh, it, it ain't uh, fake. You, you can read the same story in the Abilene uh, Post and about a half dozen Eastern uh, papers. I told you, boys, that you didn't know nothing about the great Ned Austin. Where's Bert? I'm feeling awful thirsty. Oh, uh, 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 Billy, don't don't you think somebody ought to mention this to uh, Ned? Oh, he'll find out sooner or later. Won't he be plum tickled? <laughs> You couldn't I, tell I read it right in that page on the newspaper there. Yeah, well, well, don't you well, good afternoon, Wood Wilkins. Uh, afternoon, Bert. Uh, howdy, Ned. Wood Wilkins. Oh, uh, afternoon, Ned. Uh, uh, Mr. Austin. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me. I, I, I just got to get, uh, get along. <laughs> well, I wonder what got into her. Uh, don't know what it might be. Um, how are you, Ned? <laughs> well, I, I'm fine. What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Just a slight case of nerves, that's all. Nothing for you to be concerned about. Well, you, you'd better take care of yourself. Oh, sure, Ned. Uh, you too. Uh, Widow Wilkins, wait for me. I am waiting, and I'm wondering. You know, he don't look like a steely-eyed gunslinger. Yeah. It's always them quiet types you gotta look out for. Emily, my dear, I I'm home. Ned Austin, have you seen the newspaper today? Well, no, I haven't. We got any shipment of nails. Half of them were rusty and I had to sort through them all. Here, just... you can read one right now. There's a very interesting article on the front page. Page. Oh, yes, I see. That is amazing. 63 straight days without rain. Oh, no, 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 no. Down here. Where? Oh, see, you're right. That is interesting. He has the same name I do. Ned. He is you. What? Look, he now lives in Smoke's End. He has the same name, age, everything. Ned, I'm only going to ask you this once. And I want an honest answer. Were you ever a gunfighter? No. I didn't think so. Well, maybe you can tell me where this story came from. Well, it's some kind of gross error. A, a case of mistaken identity. Obviously. Emily... If I didn't know you better, I'd say you were disappointed that I'm not this person. Well, it's just that sometimes every woman... Oh, oh never mind. If you say, Ned, that you were never a gunfighter, I believe you. Well, thank you. So, now, what are you going to do about it? Well, it's not what I'm going to do about it. It's what they're going to do. They obviously have to print a retraction. They can't go around accusing innocent people of being retired gunslingers. No, that won't do any good. By now, everybody in town has read this. All our friends, everyone we know. What will they think? Well, I'll tell them it's not true. Then they'll think you're crazy. They'll think you made up the story. Why would they think that? Well, if it's not true, somebody must have made it up. No, I, I think the best thing to do is just ignore it. People will forget. People don't forget, Emily, that you're a hired killer. But we don't want to fan the fires. Oh, promise me, Ned, that you won't say anything about this to anyone. Well, I don't think anyone who knows me is ever going to believe this junk. Oh, my dear Ned... You have a lot to learn about human nature. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. <laughs> It was a 
dive like any other, except worse. I was tracking the number one killer. My name's Hart, Sam Hart. I was just walking out of the joint when I spotted his accomplices. What are you serving there, sister? A taco for the moose and a shake for baby face. How have you got against them? Nothing. I'm just doing my job. Sending them to their graves is more like it. You're giving them some nutrition, all right. But you're loading them with calories and animal fat and cholesterol. Bug off. What's wrong with that, anyway? A fatty diet makes it easy for the big one. Heart and blood vessel disease. Who's setting them up? Most people set themselves up for heart disease. With smoking, no exercise, and improper diet. Call your American Heart Association for more information. We're fighting for your life. Mystery by the Masters. Edgar Allan Poe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson, Guy de Maupassant. You'll hear radio dramatizations of their most popular works on our CBS Radio Mystery Theater Weekend Classics. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for Mystery seven times a week on most of these stations with original radio plays Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, we bring you the classics, modern adaptations of the world's greatest stories of mystery, adventure, suspense, and even humor from the pen of Mark Twain. If you've read them before and want to enjoy them again, or if they're new to you now, listen here and enjoy our radio dramatizations of the world's great literature every Saturday and Sunday on CBS Radio Mystery Theater. And of course, listen in Monday through Friday, too, for original tales of the macabre over most of these CBS Radio Network stations. <laughs> So the legend of Ned Austin was born, and it continued to grow. Every week, new exploits appeared in journals throughout the land. Between the imagination of that noted liar, Billy Weaver, and that of writer Clarence Dayton, even Homer would be hard put to come up with better tales. And as his wife Emily warned him, it did no good for Ned to deny the stories. You busy, Ned? Uh, Judge Cahill, this is a surprise. Uh, to what do I owe this visit? Politics, Ned, politics. That's the place for a man like you. Undoubtedly, you are aware that we shall be electing a new mayor soon. I vote for you every year. No, Ned, I shall not be running this year. The party would like to nominate another man. A man so popular, he would be a virtual shoe-in, even without campaigning. Who? Oh, what modesty. <laughs> the public loves that. The man I speak of is none other than yourself. Me? Mayor? Of course, it would only be a stepping stone. I firmly believe that in a couple of years, you could occupy the governor's mansion. Governor, Your name is known far and wide across the state. It is on the lips of every schoolboy. You'll campaign in a dark suit wearing a gun belt and, of course, a marshal star. We'll create a law and order platform. Uh, and you uh, should... well, uh, thank, thank you very much, Judge Cahill. I, I, I will certainly consider it. <laughs> I don't want to be a legend. <laughs> and so, before Zeke had a chance to pick up that horse, I went out and bought myself some gold paint. Yeah. I spent all night painting that old nag's teeth gold. <laughs> Ned! Ned Austin! What are you doing here? It, it, it's all right, fellas. Get back to your business. <laughs> Have a seat, Ned. Thank you. What are you doing in the saloon? <laughs> really? Henry? For the first time in my life, I feel like I need a drink. Well, let me buy you one, then. Barkeep, give us another one over here, will you? Ah, thanks. Put this one on Ed's bill. Now, tell me, Ned, what's the problem? What's the problem? Billy, have you ever had to live up to being a legend? No. 
Except when it comes to drinking. <laughs> well, it's no fun, I can tell you that. Everybody wants favors, everybody notices me, everybody wants to talk to me and, and be my friend. Well, what's wrong with that? I well, wish I was in your shoes. I could probably get credit anywhere in town. I already have credit. Oh, now look, Ned, I think you're taking this whole thing too seriously. How many people get to be living legends in their lifetime? Not too many, I can tell you that. Hell, a lot of people spend their whole lives trying to get people to notice them and, and think they're important. Why, you got it without even trying. Yes, I, I, I suppose that's true. Well, certainly. You should be enjoying it rather than trying to fight it. Let people think you're a hero. You might even learn to like it. Yeah, but, but my wife is... Uh, uh, Emily, will... Emily might even learn to like it. I bet people have been paying up their hardware bills a lot faster. Well, that is true. <laughs> it, it, it hasn't hurt business at all. And there have been a few other advantages. I get right to the head of the line at the barber shop. You see? And they polished my buggy at the livery stable, and I didn't even ask them to. You see, what did I tell you? This hero business is a snap. But you just look and act the part, and everything is going to be just fine. Yes. Well, uh, cheers, uh, gentlemen. Cheers! Oh, cheers! cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, there now, Ned. Oh, it may take a while to get the hang of it. <laughs> Dear, I'm home. <gasps> Why, Ned Austin, I do believe you're drunk. I do believe so, too. But you... Uh, you never drink. <laughs> That's probably why I am drunk. Oh, uh, oh uh, dear, sit down before you fall down. Uh, uh, oh, oh, my... Ned Austin, uh, I am ashamed of you. You're acting just like those town hooligans. Like that no good Billy Weaver. Now, don't... Don't badmouth Billy Weaver. He is a friend of mine. Oh, I, I, I just don't know what's gotten into you since those newspaper stories started coming out. You've changed. <laughs> I should certainly hope so. Why, before I was just a hardware store owner. Now I'm a hero hardware store owner. But you didn't do any of those things, Ned. Did Hercules do all those things he was supposed to do? <laughs> I doubt it. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if you were actually a hero, but... Well, this is ridiculous. Is it ridiculous to want people to look up to me? So what if I'm not a gunslinger? I am important. And I have as much right to respect as, 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 as anyone else. <laughs> oh, Ned <laughs> Austin, will you please grow up? Woman, will you please shut up? Well, fellas, there she is, smoke's end. Oh. Are you sure that's where Ned Austin lives, Joe Bob? <laughs> that crummy little place? That's what the newspaper's saying, and I'd better be right. Yeah. We come a hell of a fur piece for nothing if it ain't. It's right, Ike. It is right. Hey, hey, Joe Bob, do you think the paper's also right about him him being so fast? I mean, Ned Austin, that is? I don't know, but there's three of us, ain't they? One of us is bound to get him. And it better be me. Shut up, Ike. We ain't decided that well, yet. What about me? I want to be famous, too. Now, don't you worry, Horace. We're all going to be famous. The men that gunned down Ned Austin are bound to be. Yeah, he's got himself some reputation. And we're going to get ourselves that reputation soon. 
They're going to write about us in history books. The Hester boys. The ones that gunned down Ned Austin. <laughs> <laughs> doggies. <laughs> we'll be right up there with Wyatt Earp and, and Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah, we sure will be. <laughs> we got to get him first. Uh, uh, we, we, we'll do that, all right. <laughs> hey, uh, fellas, you're still a couple miles to that place. Uh, what you say we make camp and go on in the morning? Huh? You ain't getting scared, are you, Joe Bob? Now you just wait and see who gets off the first shot. <laughs> I'm tired, is all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, l- let's get some sleep. Uh, might as well. We got a big day ahead of us in the morning. Oh, sure do. We're gonna kill the great Ned Austin. <laughs> All across America, folks are saving at the Sears Pre-Memorial Day Sale. We picked up Sears Easy Living Flat and Ceiling Paints for only $8.99 and saved $4 per gallon. And on Easy Living Semi-Gloss Paints, too. These are Sears' best quality paints at a great price. I got rugged Sears Weatherbeater Paint for only $9.99 and saved $5 a gallon. That's a 30% savings on durable Sears Weatherbeater Paint. It's, it's the Sears Pre-Memorial Day Sale. Available at most Sears retail stores. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. And now for men, a Sears super value on a vested four-piece suit. Just $89.97 is the special purchase price that buys a coat, two slacks, and a reversible vest that combine for a wardrobe of six different outfits. Come see for yourself that this special purchase, though not reduced, is an exceptional value. Sears vested four-piece suit, only $89.97 while quantities last. It's a value that's worth a special trip. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> Who has short shorts? Sears has short shorts. In pre-washed denim at the budget shop. The budget shop? Yeah, but I thought that's known for... for value? It is. You know how rock teams with roll? Well, price teams with active, fun styling at the budget shop. Like Easy Care Polyester Terry Tea Tops. And short shorts. A look and feeling that's cool, man. Cool. <laughs> pre-washed, too. In navy or white polyester and cotton with all the jean style details. Terry and denim are ready to bop in Sears budget shop. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Lorn Green again. And here's the concluding act of The Legend. Well, where are we going, Joe Bob? Now, just where do you think we're going? We're going in the saloon. Come on, boys. This ain't no funeral. Drink up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, drink up. <laughs> hey, hey, Billy. Who, who are these y- y- yokels? I don't know. But I ain't never seen so many guns outside the 7th Cavalry. You, friend. Can I buy you a drink? Why, certainly. That just happens to be my favorite method of getting acquainted. <laughs> what about your pal? Oh, anything I drink, he'll drink. Mm-hmm. Bartender, give us a couple over here, too. Now, my name is uh, Joe Bob Haster. It's my baby brother, Horace. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and our cousin, Ike. We're from uh, Plain City. Well, pleased to meet you. Yeah. 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 Likewise. <laughs> you know what, friend? Someday... You are going to be able to tell your grandchildren that you met us. Well, I certainly hope so. Cheers. To fame and fortune. Yeah, to fame and fortune. Uh, well, what what brings you gentlemen to Smoke's End? Uh, uh, business? Business? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might say that. Uh, we're here to um, do a little hunting. Oh, there's not much hunting in these parts. Well, that's going to be enough for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, either of you boys know a certain fellow by the name of Ned Austin? Ned Austin. Let, let's see now. Uh, is he short and fat? Oh, you must know him. He's world famous. Oh, that Ned Austin. Oh, why, uh, yeah. Uh, he used to live in uh, these parts, uh-huh. Used to? Well, a man like that doesn't stay in one place too long. 
pretty much just comes and goes like a wisp of smoke. No family, no nothing. Hey, Joe Bob, a fellow at the end of the bar says this Ned Austin fellow lives in a big yellow house at the west end of town. Mister, seems like you ain't such a good source for information. Well, I'm just new in town myself. I, I never met the gentleman. That's too bad. Because it looks like you're never going to have the chance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the whiskey in this place is just terrible. I bet you fellas would appreciate some good sipping whiskey, like some 12 year old Kentucky bourbon. I got some at home. Uh, uh, let's go. No, no. Henry here can fetch it. You, you know where I mean, don't you, Henry? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I know where you mean. Uh,. I'll be right uh, b back. Now, don't you take too long, Henry. Ned, hurry up. you you got to get out of this house. Uh, slow down, Henry. Now, what's the matter? Well, three strangers just rode into t town looking for you. They, they want to kill you. Oh, no. Now, now, let's not panic. The marshal... Is, is in Abilene, uh, testifying in, 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 in a to trial. There, there, there's nobody who can stop them if they come gunning for you. Oh, Ned. Now, where are they now? Uh, in the saloon. Uh, uh, Billy can keep them there for a while, but sooner or later, they, they're going to come looking for you. They, they already know where you uh, live. Ned, we've got to get out of town. Yes, I, I, I guess so. Uh, thank you for warning me, Henry. Uh -huh. Emily, you pack a few things, and I'll hitch up the buggy. <laughs> Sounds suspicious like, but uh, where is that friend of yours? He doesn't know my place too well. Uh, he must be having a hard time finding where I keep the liquor. <laughs> he didn't go to get no whiskey, did he? Did he? Oh, yeah. Mike? Yeah. Get him, Mike. Get him. Yeah. You people are just trying to protect Ned Austin, that's all. But if he's that tough, he won't need your protecting. Anyhow, we're going to find out. Come on. The buggy's ready, Emily. Now, don't worry. We don't need to take much. Where are we going? We can stay with my sister and Abilene for a couple of days. Come along now. We better get going. <laughs> Ned! Ned Austin! We know you're in there. Now you come on out, and we're going to take that pretty little house apart. Uh, apart? Oh, Ned. Ned, what are we going to do? Now, we're going to stay calm. Perhaps I can talk them out of it. When they see I don't even own a gun. Come on, Ned. We'll get them pissed. No, no, Ned. You can't go out there. I'm just going to the window to talk to them. Hey, out there. Hey, he says, hey! <laughs> oh, horses eat hay! <laughs> Good day to you, Mr. Austin. Are you ready for a little old target practice? Well, I, I know what you fellows have read about me, but none of it is true. I swear. I have never fired a gun in my life. Well, it's about time you try! Oh, oh, oh no! It's all right, Emily. Now stay back. I swear, I don't even own a gun. And it wouldn't accomplish anything if you killed me. What do you mean? If we kill you, they're going to write about us like they write about you. That's right, Mr. Austin. But we ain't no bushwhackers. We're going to make it a fair fight right out here into the middle of the street. Fair? What, three against one? Hell, ma'am, this ain't no problem for the great Ned Austin. He's gunned down half a dozen men any number of times. Yeah, right. <laughs> Come on, Ned, let's go. Oh, oh, we've got to get help, Ned. Who's going to help me? Everybody thinks I'm the fastest gun in town. Well, well, what if you told them positively you wouldn't fight no matter what? They surely won't shoot an unarmed man. Hey there, Ned. I'm getting the feeling that you're stalling. You ain't afraid of us, are you? I... I, I hung up my guns a long time ago. I don't want to go back to that. I won't fight you no matter what. What are we going to do now, Joe Bob? Why, that stinking son of... If he wants to play dirty, so can we. 
Listen to me, big bad Ned Austin. If you don't come out of that house with a gun belt on in the next five minutes, we're going to start shooting. <laughs> Uh, are, are you all right? Yeah. I never liked those two front teeth anyway. Well, we we got to get help for, for, for Ned. Now, those three lunatics have got him p- p- pinned down in his house. I asked every person I could find to come with me. They all claim that Ned brought it down on himself with his reputation and everything, so let him get himself out of it. Well, he, he can. I know. But these people ain't gunfighters either. Well, well what are we going to do? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. My big mouth got him into this mess. Maybe it can get him out. Come on! Okay, Ned, you got two minutes left. Maybe they're bluffing. But we can't afford to take that chance. Where are you going? Out there. It's pure logic, Emily. It makes more sense to endanger the life of one person than the lives of everybody in town. Oh, no. No, I won't let you. Emily, if they kill me, they'll stop and leave the rest of the town alone. It's obvious they won't leave until I go out there. Oh, my dear. And you always said you could never do anything heroic. And I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to realize that a person doesn't have much choice whether to be a hero or not. Okay, Mr. Ned Austin, your time is up. You want me to send Horace down to that school? No. I'm coming out. Goodbye. My dear Emily. All right. This is what you wanted. Where are you going? Well, I told you before, I don't own one. Some big, bad gunslinger he is. <laughs> Horace, give me your extra gun. Oh, Joe Bob, I, I might need it. You won't need it. All right. You can stick it in your belt, Austin. Can you draw from there? As well as from anywhere else. <laughs> Here. Uh, Keep them covered, I. Now, I want your promise that when you're through with me... You'll get out of town. You can count on it. Okay. I've got a gun. Now what? You draw. Ready. One, two. <clears throat> hey, what you doing here? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just watching. You go right ahead with what you're doing. How comes you want to watch? Well, you see, uh, Clarence Dayton, the famous writer, is a personal friend of mine. When he comes back to town, I want to be able to tell him exactly what happened. Hey, that's a good idea. (laughs) Yep, I want to be able to tell him exactly which one of you gunned down Ned Austin. Which one of us? (laughs) We're all three going to kill him. That's not exactly true. Only one of your bullets will kill him. The other two will be shooting a corpse. Besides, how will it look in history if all three of you shoot him at once? That'll make Ned Austin an even bigger legend than before. It took three men to kill Ned Austin, they'll say. You see, in order to become famous, the man who shoots Ned Austin will have to take him on man to man. Billy. Now relax, Ned. I know you want to put up your title fair and swear. You know, I think this fellow has a point. All right, all right, now. You and Horace stand by. Me? Why me? I want to shoot him, too. Uh, Joe Bob, you promised. Yeah, Joe Bob, why should you be the one? It was my idea. But I'm faster than you. Who said? I said. You ain't. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) Now you've done it. My shooting arm is done for. What about my leg? I can't stand up. Uh, I'm I'm the only one left, so so I'll do it. (laughs) Henry, Henry, I think you better go fetch Doc Hinkle and tell him to clear his schedule for the next couple of days. With pleasure. That was some meal, Ned. Your wife is sure a good cook. I know. Well, Ned... 
Are you tired of being a legend? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, there are certain compensations I never even dreamed of. Oh, sweetheart, you're all finished. Is there anything else I can get for you? Uh, no, no, not, not right now. But I invited Billy over for dinner tomorrow night, too. Anything you want, my dear. Your friends are always welcome here. Hmm. <clears throat> well, if, if that's settled, I think we'll head down to the saloon and get a drink. Well, that sounds just fine. A man like you needs his relaxation. My man. Yeah, oh. Emily, <laughs> please, not now. Well, I'll be waiting up for you, dear. Ned, you're getting better at this hero business all the time. Well, Billy, I'm liking it better all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The power spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car in Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belt and 28 tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belt and 28 tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. When I need advice, I go to my mom. Why not? It's free. Now that I'm married and moving into a new house, I want all the advice I can get. So when mom says shop Sears, I listen. You should. Sears is a great help on those big items you'll need for your new home. Major appliances like washers, dryers, and refrigerators. They'll deliver, install, and service. I always depend on Sears. You should, too. Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Legend was written by John Bornholt, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Parley Bear and Tommy Cook. Featured in the cast were Vivi Janis, Lou Horn, Marvin Miller, Dawes Butler, and Howard Culver. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. This is Mel Blank and Voices of My Business. In Warner Brothers cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character... Daffy Duck. <laughs> or... Uh, Porky Pig. Or... Bugs Bunny Duck. We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community. And it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes. And you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all the air folks. Library. A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. 
York, Chicago, St. Louis, Miami, Seattle. Our biggest cities are sending out cries for more VISTA volunteers. VISTA means volunteers in service to America. VISTA volunteers work with groups of inner city residents to tackle the many urban problems that can't be solved alone. By working together with local leaders, entire neighborhoods can be restored, job training centers can be created, educational programs, health and legal services can be expanded to reach all who need them. VISTA means working through the democratic process to better our cities. Community people are learning that they can have a voice in making the decisions that affect their lives. VISTA volunteers come from all backgrounds. Many come from the neighborhoods they work in. They all share one conviction, that self-reliant, self-confident, caring individuals can make a difference in a community. America needs more VISTA volunteers. Put yourself where you're needed. Call 800-424-8580 or write VISTA, Washington, D.C., 20525. A public service of this station and action. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. Professor, everybody knows that smoking is no good. Yeah? How about smoked salmon? Smoked turkey. Smoked haddock. Uh, smoking a haddock doesn't hurt anything. <laughs> Look what it done to the haddock. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.